word for baby. Baldy, infant, bub. Oh, baby, what a way to start the game. Now, I'm no baby, but I have been called a baby, and by definition, that is false. Synonyms for someone my age are more like grown up, or mature woman, or woman of legal age. You know what? Just call me baby. We don't need to be exact, but the exact answer to this question is infant. If you said infant, you got it right. If you said baldy, you're not totally wrong, but you're kind of rude. How would you like it? And if you said Bob, are there baby Bobs out there? Has anyone ever named their baby Bob? I mean, I've never met a baby, a baby named Bob, but I sure want to, baby. Send us an email if you have a baby Bob at home. One thing babies do is eat a lot, which reminds me, it's time for our Hangry Games question of the day. That's right, I hear your tummy is grumbling out there. Let's get to question two. Which of the following is a popular American kit snack? Goldfish, sardines, dried squid. Does cereal count as a snack? Because that's what I had for dinner last night. Snacking is popular all over the world, but it does vary. In Germany, they like knoppers. In Japan, they got Pocky. The UK has Hit Biscuits, Norway has Smash, Ghana has Coolie Coolie. <laughs> that sounds coolie. But what are you eating for snacks? The answer to this question is goldfish. I hope you picked goldfish and not sardines or dried squid. I mean, that is one way to get your kids to stop snacking, and that is your pro tip of the day. You're welcome. Goldfish snacks came out on the snack market in 1962, and consumers are still hooked. Now they come in all kinds of flavors. They're not just goldfish anymore. No, no. Now they're pretzel, parmesan, and pizza flavored, even rainbow. There really are plenty of fish in the sea or a snack aisle in your local supermarket in this case. Well, let's swim on downstream to the next question. And now for question three. Captain Underpants is a kid's book series written by Charles Dickens, Dov Pilkey, Jackie Collins. Tra -la -la. Good old Captain Underpants. That sounds like the name of someone I've been on a blind date with. Some baldy in underpants. I'm, I'm not talking about a baby in this case. Although the crying, the crying was weird. If you didn't want the pasta, just say so. Jeez. Anyway, Captain Underpants is a book series that is about a comic book written by the character named George Beard. Was that confusing? The answer isn't. The person who created that character and wrote this series is Dov Pilkey. Dov Pilkey is your answer. If you got that right, you like the books, or your kids read them, or maybe you're running around in your underpants saving the day. I don't know, and you know what? Maybe it's best that I don't have to keep some things for you. I don't want to know, but I do want to know what question four is, and here it is. Meghan Markle's firstborn son will have what title? Lord of Sussex, Baron Kakeel, Earl of Dumbarton. Meghan Markle married a prince, Prince Harry. This fairy tale romance started out on a blind date. Seriously, guys? Really? That's what we're doing? First, Famous people and royalty can't go on blind dates. For them, it's just a fun surprise date. There's no risk in this kind of blind date. Normal people, blind dates are blind for a reason. Too much information about one of you is usually a deal breaker. So there's no risk in Megan and Harry kind of blind date. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, you're just a prince? Well, call me when you're a king. Next. Anyway, these two quickly fell in love, and now Meghan Markle has a little hot cross bun in the oven, and if that little royal bun is a boy, he will be titled Earl of Dumbarton. That's right, Earl of Dumbarton. Looks like we got a lot of you schooled on that question. Yep, yeah, knocked you out the pocket on that one. The little one will be named Earl of Dumbarton, and if you chose that one, you got it right. If it's a girl, she gets to be a lady, which makes no sense because a girl is not yet a lady. Anyway, long story short to my friends out there listening, if you want to set me up on blind dates, earls, dukes, ladies, lords, princes, princesses only, I'll take it. I'll also take you to question number five. President Bill Clinton passed a toilet paper tax on how many cents per roll? Three cents, six cents, ten cents. There's a tax on toilet paper. 
mind blown on that. It doesn't even come in color anymore. Toilet paper costs enough as it is. Some celebrities see no dollar sign when it comes to toilet paper. However, Simon Cowell, American Idol judge, and Kris Jenner, Kardashian matriarch, both buy black toilet paper. Miss Jenner says that it matches her house's color scheme. I guess cheap toilet paper is what works for me then. This black toilet paper is made by Renova and costs $23 for a pack of three. Can you spare a square? I hope you can spare an extra six cents because that is the answer to this question. If you picked six cents, you got it right. This six cents per roll tax increased the product by 30 cents. That may not sound like a lot, but sometimes you need 30 cents of toilet paper. This toilet paper tax was passed in 1996. Well, I still have 176 of you still in the running for the game. Holy moly, maybe the rest of you had to grab some toilet paper. No judgments here. If you're still here, do some push-ups because you're almost halfway there. This is like mile 13 of a marathon. You can do this. And if you didn't make it, never fear. You can keep playing with us. Stick with us and even better, come back every Tuesday and Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, because you might go the extra mile then and and as always, follow our page, like us, turn on notifications because we don't want to miss you. All right, stop the presses. It's our that sick <coughs> question of the day. Gonna need a doctor. <sighs> All right, pulse is good. All right, everybody, do some donkey kicks some donkey kicks in there because we're about to kick butt with question six. According to the CDC, from 2005 to 2012, chickenpox outbreaks decreased by how much? 95%, 83%, 78%. The chickenpox, is that, is that even a thing anymore? I mean, I had it as a kid and I liked it. I got to stay home from school. I got to play connect the dots on my arms. It was entertaining. The only other thing we had to do back then was play Commodore and Atari. There was no YouTube, or Apple TV. There was chicken pox and we liked it. A lot less people are liking it these days because chicken pox outbreaks have decreased by 78%. If you said 78%, then you got it right. I don't know if most of you got it right, but I do know most of you do not have chicken pox. The chicken pox outbreaks decreased in the United States because we introduced the varicella vaccine in 1995. We aren't scratching like we used to, but I'm itching for question seven. <laughs> In the 2015-2016 school year, what number of students in college received scholarships? One in five, one in eight, one in ten. This is a good one, parents. Please listen closely. College is expensive. No one paid for my college tuition. In fact, that blind date that I mentioned before didn't even pay for my meal. All parents try to prep and push their kids in the direction of scholarships because college is so pricey. The more educated you get, the more money you spend. I have a friend with a college degree. She's got a master's. She's got a law degree. Yeah, sure, she's smart, but geez, she's so broke. We're going for broke with the answer of this question, and it is one in eight college students received scholarships in the 2015-2016 school year. That's 12.7%. That's math, and that cost me about $5,000 in college tuition. <laughs> That's true, but you know, enough about me. Let me hear about you guys out there. I wanna hear what's happening there. Katie says, snuck away while the kids are in the living room with my hubby. Katie, I hope you also took the snacks and a really good juice box, and you can just tell the kids, I don't know what happened to your string cheese. Haley says, I need to win, it's my birthday money. Hey, you know what? Maybe you can sprinkle like some good like happy birthday luck on yourself. I hope you do win. You get to buy a lot of candles with $1,000. Jackie says, bar trivia at home in my jammies. I hope it's a onesie with a zipper, a footie, and a little booty flap on the back. Hanine says, I didn't get schooled because I copied my sister. Hanine, you hit your wheel to the wagon that makes the most sense. I'm glad you and your sister are still in the running. Well, let's move on and get this $1,000 prize. Question eight, what school did Michelle Obama not go to? Yale, Harvard, Princeton. I wonder if Michelle Obama got scholarships. Hmm. The first lady just put out her first book, Becoming. A fitting title for someone very becoming. Her first book is predicted to be the best-selling memoir ever and has been selling like hotcakes. Mom, writer, lawyer, first lady. Is there anything that she can't do? 
I mean, I guess not go to all the schools listed in our answers. The school Miss Obama did not attend was Yale. If you chose Yale, you just got it right. She got her undergrad at Princeton and her law degree at Harvard. Impressive young lady. I bet she could win this trivia game. Luckily for you, you don't need any of those degrees to win. You do need, however, to answer question nine to get Closer, looks like we only have 56 players left in the game. I hope you're ready, because from one great lady to the next, we're about to do our girl power question of the day. That's how I feel the surge of the girl power. Nothing finer than number nine. Let's do it. The first woman in US history to receive a military pension is commemorated in which state? Virginia, Massachusetts, New York. Women and firsts. I like to think I'm the first woman to ask this question. If I'm wrong, don't correct me. Let me have this. Pensions are great. It's money you get after you retire. It's like free money, right? Well, how do I get one of those? You can have a pension and a retirement plan. So far, all I've got is a Starbucks card I got for my birthday. Not feeling too shabby about it. Mocha latte. Pensions are great, and so is the first woman to get a military one. Margaret Cochran Corbin was a Revolutionary War hero who was commemorated in the great state of New York. If your answer was New York, you just got it right. Margaret disguised herself as a male soldier and helped her husband fire a cannon until he then died in battle. She then became known as a sure shot with impeccable aim. She received honors and also the very first military pension as a woman. Let's see if you're a sure shot with question 10. What do you use to help an angel food cake rise? Baking powder, tube cake pan, cold eggs. Mmm, cake. I love angel food cake. A good angel food cake will rise to where? Heaven? Get it? Angel, angel, heaven. It's fine. Baking is a science, and you need just the right ingredients to do that thing, as it has to mix with that thing to do this thing, and then one thing goes wrong and the whole thing falls apart. It's all so precise, and that's why I buy my baked goods at the bakery, where all the hard things are already done. When it comes to angel food cake, one thing you need to help make that cake rise is a tube cake pan. Tube cake pan is the correct answer. Angel food cake doesn't have baking powder in it, and the egg whites cannot be too cold or it will collapse. The horror. The tube cake pan helps hold the cake structure and prevent it from collapsing. Also, don't grease it, cool it upside down, and a bunch of other steps that you don't have to do if you just go buy it at the bakery, people. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Oof, it's hot in here. Oh wait. It's probably because it's time for our hot and bothered question of the day. Fitzing a little. We are only two questions away from the finish line. Let's get those knees up for question 11. How many years after male Viagra hit the market did the female version, Addie, get FDA approval? 20, 13, 17. Viagra shouldn't just be for men. What about us ladies? Hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD, may occur and will end up to one third of women in the US. It's defined as a lack or absence of sexual desire or fantasies for sexual activity. Sounds exactly like marriage. Women's sexuality has often been a mystery and so was the female form of Viagra until 17 years after male Viagra hit the market. 17 years is your answer. Male Viagra hit the market in 1998 and 17 years later in 2015, a female form called Addie was approved by the FDA. Unlike male Viagra, which is taken as needed, Addie is a daily pill. One step at a time. Am I seeing this correctly? Oh my goodness, 21 of you are still in the running for the $1,000 cash prize? Are you tired? Are you confused? Don't worry, you got this. You have one lap left, one question to go. If you get this final question right, you can walk away knowing you accomplished something. And even better, you can brag to your friends because you're a boss. So do some squats and let's tackle question 12. Which president signed the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act that recognized dyslexia? George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act is a law that makes available a free, a pro appropriate public education to eligible children with disabilities throughout the nation and ensures special education and related services to those children. Throughout the years after its passage, it's been updated. 
In 2004, the act included dyslexia and the president who signed that version into law was... President George W. Bush. George W. Bush was your final answer. Dyslexia was then considered a special learning disability, which ensured services to those children. George W. did something right. And hopefully you did too. I'm sorry, what's that? Mm-hmm. Getting word of it, the numbers are in. I have a total of 15 winners. You each are winning $66.67.